This meeting was held in exciting Las Vegas, Nevada from July 9th through the 11th, 1999. This is videotape number 31, Macintosh Security. Uh, the next speaker, um, but I wanted to give a little background on what's been happening in the Macintosh scene, as it were. A lot of people seem to think that Macintosh is unhackable. I read this numerous times. There was a recent article by Adam Pennenberg that quoted somebody. They said, oh, you a machine, get a Mac. That's uh, not true. It never has been. Uh, back in, let me think, 91, 92, uh, when one of the law first started, I started a uh, Macintosh cracking archive, hacking archive. I would keep little programs, uh, little tools, Mac versions of crack for uh, you know, unique password cracking and other various tools, AOL for free, which was big back then. Um, some of the Addies crackers from Macintosh. And I just put them up on the FTP site, and everybody laughed at me when I did it, and the other off members, you know, Mudge was like, nobody wants that stuff. And we put it up, and it was immediately a big hit. My little 20 meg FTP archive was like taken over by people just downloading stuff, and it was really amazing. Um, so I was really surprised at how well it took off. Eventually, the RackMac archives moved onto the web uh, from the straight FTP server, which was only running on Mac SE. And we moved it on the web. I webified the entire site, put links up. And the archives kept growing and growing. We released uh, RackMac archives CD volume one, which is now sold out, has been for a while, and there will not be a volume two. Um, a very, very popular site. I was very surprised at how many other people out there were, were working with Macintoshes um, and doing that sort of thing. So it's a really popular uh, type topic. It's, it's unusual because you don't hear about it very often. Um, you hear more about the NT, the Windows, Unix, nobody ever talks about Mac OS. <coughs> so, Black Mac was going strong, was doing well, lots of hits, lots of, uh, lots of people looking at it, downloading stuff, uploading stuff. The Rack released a CD, 1,000 copies, sold out. But my interest started to go elsewhere, and Rack has sort of fallen by the wayside as I've taken over Hacker News and some other duties. And unfortunately, Rack hasn't been updated in a long time, and a lot of people have sent me mail saying, Hey, when are you going to update Rack? When are you going to put new files up? When are you going to do this? When are you going to do that? Fix the broken links, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I, mean, I get a lot of mail on that. And I just, unfortunately, I don't have time. And when Rack started, it was the only resource to get Macintosh utilities. And so I felt it was sort of a duty to put it up. But lately, recently, last year or two, we've had some other people who have sort of taken over the lead, as it were, for Macintosh hacking. Um, and that's who's here today. The Freaky's Macintosh Archives and SecureMac.com is now the probably the premier um, Macintosh hacking sites to get your information and your, and your tools. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to officially declare the Rack Mac archives in mothballs. It's not going to go down. I'm not going to take the site down. I'm not going to uh, remove any of the software that's up there. But I will officially mothball it so that people won't expect it to be updated. And I'm going to link to Freaky here, or Freaky's Macintosh archives, and basically pass the symbolic baton um, from my archive over to his so that uh, we can now have a, an official site or resource where you can get your Macintosh information. So without further ado, I will introduce to you Freaky from Freaky's Macintosh archives. All right, I don't know how many of you people actually own Macs, or how many people just... All right, um, I'm going to go over some different stuff here, Macintosh security. 
what Mac OS offers in security, the programs out there, and the people who make the security programs. So, all right, stuff. Security software out there for the Mac, it's pretty simple, it's stupid. People will put out the software out there, don't put any time into it. They actually just do it for the money. Yeah, there we go. Uh, there's few companies out there that actually have worked with me and Freaks Macintosh Archives, SecureMac.com to improve their software. Uh, we, Freaks Mac Archives puts out the cracks for all different things. Uh, one of the software out there made by Power On Software is called OnGuard. Uh, right now they are, in my opinion, one of the best software companies out there for the Mac because they actually care about it. Most of the other software companies out there just kind of say, I don't care, your site's nothing. So. When uh, No Guard was released, it kind of just removes the wonderful little encryption that it uses. And a couple days later, they fixed that and made it stronger. And this isn't my computer. Magic Key is a Apple Talk brute force cracker. It's made by someone named Yeah. <laughs> it's made by uh, System Cowboy. He's worked with me in creating some of the software out there. He's one of the people that keeps Freaks Mac archives running because people check back daily to the site because they want to know what's out there. What this program does is it brute force attacks uh, the Apple Talk password file for the server, which we're not running on here. And it spits out the passwords. Pretty nifty stuff. software out there like at ease who out there actually uses at ease still nobody all right at ease is the simplest program out there to actually bypass there's a hundred different ways system 7.6 is going to have a kind of beast or seven seven eight seven is going to have a beefed up version of at ease that supports encryption and other nifty stuff like that so they're going to try to bring it back uh, different ways to bypass at ease startup disk spacebar shift key file replacement turn it off and who out there uses foolproof one person all right, foolproof is kind of fun. School districts like to use it, uh, K-12 environments and some spiffy agencies out there who didn't want to be named. But they use it for their security environment and most everybody has come to realize that it's not secure. And the ways to get past it, there's programs out there that'll decrypt the password. Uh, there's, again, the startup disk, spacebar, shift key, file replacement. And it's hot in here. All right, for remote security, like, 
your Mac is pretty secure remotely unless you actually put something on it that makes it insecure like a server. A uh, program out there made by Power On Software screen to screen. It's like Timbuktu or PC Anywhere. Uh, somebody named Prozac made a crack for it. It'll let you log on as a minister from any computer. Power On Software doesn't know about it yet, but it'll be out there. And the school districts really use it a lot to watch people. Uh, another one out there is was made by a guy named Weedo, Remote Admin Extension. Has anybody ever used that? A couple. Alright, that's a cool program. Uh, his new version has keystroke logger. What, what it basically is, it's like back orifice. What you guys know, it's a little extension that sits on the computer and lets somebody log in remotely, take control of the computer, do file sharing, all that other stuff. Uh, he kind of retired doing that, but I'm sure his source code will be out there. I mean, he could have used a better programming language, but it's kind of cool. Uh, for web servers, the one that comes bundled with OSA is the MS Personal Web Server. That's cool. Uh, there was a denial of service attack for that. It was fixed uh, pretty quick. Another problem I noticed with it is when I tried to remove it, I left one of the extensions on and my computer wouldn't start up ever again. So, it's a good server. Oh yeah, Y2K problems for the Mac? Not gonna be any. So all you Windows people, everybody else who has problems, get a Mac. Alright, I started in... Yeah, it is. I started in the Mac community because Weasel's site was turning down. And, well, I wanted to do the best site out there, so I put up the site. SecureMac.com is a Macintosh security site that covers it in the nice way, so school districts and teachers and parents won't get pissed off if their kids are looking at Freak's Mac archives. Let me see if I have that locally, maybe. I was supposed to have a tower computer down here, but it never got down here for some reason. So, thank you, and thanks for the guy who let me use this computer. Alright, no guard. What this program does, it's for Power On Software's On Guard. It has the emergency code when you log in. When you have OnGuard on your computer, you'll see the login screen. If you type in emergency, it'll come up with the code. You're supposed to call Power On Software and tell them and they'll give you a recovery password. This program does that without you calling them, so anybody could get administrator password again. For uh, other Macintosh security programs, there's like Empower Pro that's more for, it's used in more professional businesses. Uh, it's pretty cool software, it's rather secure compared to the other ones. I can't use the mouse. Some other things I like to talk about uh, are alternative OSs for the Macintosh. These make the Mac environment more or less secure, uh, rather less secure, because you're dealing with multiple platforms and each one has their own security problems. OS X has its own problems. Uh, you're dealing in both BSD environment and Mac OS environment. As far as server, it's really cool. It works really well, but you have twice the security to, do, to deal with. And there's 
There's lots of denial of service attacks against it already, which will be on Freaks Macintosh archives in the morning. Is there what? Uh, there's one or there's one exploit for OSX right now. It's just a CGI buffer overflow, which makes the computer go wacko and it dies. But there's going to be more out in the morning. Uh, some there's going to be a remote kind of exploit to get root. That'll be out. Uh, say that again. Yeah, that'll be out in the morning or the day after that, whenever I wake up. Uh, another software out for the Mac that I suggest you use if you want to get more into the security part of it, ResEdit, which is a resource editor, which is good for changing stuff. If you have that on a floppy, it'll save your life sometimes. Mac bugs, good for the people out there who like to crack the software. I don't know who would do that, but it's out there. Mac Paint, because it's the best little art program out there, and Resourcer. As far as the remote admin extension, uh, Guido has gotten a girlfriend, so he's kind of turned over the project and realized that real basic sucks for a programming language. <laughs> So that's going to be rewritten by somebody named. More information will be on the web page tomorrow. Uh, a nifty little program that's going to be out is going to be called Fink. It's made by a guy named Jindal. He's helped me out a lot. It, there's many of exploits and denial of service attacks. Everything's ported for Unix, for Windows. This guy is making a program that'll change the Unix source code and allow it as a plugin, and you'll be able to do all of that fun, nifty attacks, root, all that stuff from your Mac. So you just drop it in a folder, a little bit of tweaking will need to be done, but he's all up for just doing it. He's pretty cool. Uh, for all you people who like to look at source code, you can take a look at that. It's made by Prozac. It's a pretty cool program. It cracks Authenticate, which is a Macintosh security program. Another one of those programs that were made to make money. As far as keystroke loggers detection, there really isn't any internet detection intrusion software for the Macintosh. There's schools, everybody has problems with keystrokes, key loggers, you can't tell when they're installed, you can make it so it's not noticeable. The program will be released on that to actually remove and show the log files for it. If you have, like, Invisible Oasis on your computer, you make it invisible, you change the extension name to some system sounding name, you can, like, log everybody's strokes forever. Are there any questions? Stuff? Hotline servers are kind of secure. They, they actually update it once in a while. Hotline communications is nifty. Check out Caracho. Caracho is a file transfer program like Hotline, chat, everything. It is good. It supports multiple servers. It, people use it to download shareware and other programs like that and to meet people. Uh huh. Uh, hotline, there has been some insecurities with it, making links to people's hard disks so you could actually download anything from their disk, upload a file, whatever, .lnk, and you'd have access to that. As far as denial of service attacks, there have been a few for it, mostly just sending login requests and server would crash. There's a program on my website, which isn't here, 
but uh, it deals with Hotline Security. It has a good document on it and how the actual uh, protocol works for it. It's good to look up at. Anybody else? Yep. Uh, the Apple Network Assistant. Yeah, I haven't used it for back orifice type stuff. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, we'll have people take a look at that since it's cool. Anybody else? How secure is Mac DNS? I'm not quite sure about that. I haven't really dealt with Mac DNS. There's been a lot of good reviews for it as far as software, but those don't matter. There is a poisoning attack for most DNS servers. Is there one for Mac? What is it? Anybody else? My address is freaky.staticusers.net. Freaky, F R E A K Y, dot staticusers.net. Or www.securemac.com. Your choice. Anybody else? Uh, would anybody like to know about any other security products that they may use in their office, work, home? All right. If Secure does, there was a new version of Bettertona SSH that came out about a week or so ago. So they've been working on that. Hasn't been very complete or successful yet. Excuse me? For the Mac? Cool. FD Telnet? Nifty Telnet, all right. Yeah, I've used that. Nobody could use it in the U.S. Don't do it. <laughs> Anybody else? Any suggestions of what I should talk about more? Besides what? Throwing out a window? Fun malicious things you could do to a Mac. Well, it depends on how smart the user is who uses it. There's extensions out there that'll just screw with their minds. Uh, malicious things, put keystroke loggers on it, put remote and extension on it, good program. You could really screw with people's minds. If they're over a network, you could, like, Send up messages and other things like that. Um, there's a extension control panel out there that'll make your Mac look like Windows. I do know something called Go Mac. It'll give you a little start bar. As far as a full display, I'm not sure of that. Go Mac sucks.
guy. Come back. Alright. So don't use GoMac, suggestion of that guy over there. Now we start. No, I no. Um any other questions? Any software? X server for Mac, a good one. There's one you don't have to pay for. Go to Hotline, look for a shareware version. And I think it really crashed. Hold on. rock. Yes, there is. When the Macs read the disk, uh, there are viruses out there. Uh, there haven't been any new viruses out there for the longest time. So any cheap program like disinfectant, which has been discontinued for about a year, uh, it will catch it though, and you can execute on, uh, mess with the B-tree on it, just little fun annoying stuff like that, and more of Mac virus stuff. Um, Alright, I need some technical support here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to reboot into Linux. A alternative OS, maybe. I'm trying to find the power key on this little sucker. I tried it. There. Power! Oh, that was the enter key I was holding down with it. Uh, within a week, I was told by some member of some group that uh, it would be open, the source code, so that'll be out within a week from some of our programmers. There, there is a program out there currently, MacBack Orifice. It doesn't support really anything, but it'll still let you connect. So you could be cool and own Windows boxes. Any other questions? Yep, you in the corner. Give me this. Sure, of course. Password protection program as far as startup or file security. Um, on guard, it works pretty well even though it's easily hackable. stuff. Cool. Huh? Oh yeah, we won't export outside of the U.S. either. So, go to Hotline. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is a pretty cool computer. I'm taking it home with me. Yeah. Any questions? I haven't actually checked on that, but I did email the author of most of the encryption programs out there, and I remember uh, 
getting a not so technical response back, a generic, hey, it's secure. So if you trust him. Any other questions? Guy in the hat. up again. Uh, KeyKiller is a program for keys off. All it does is go to the pref file and cracks it and it turns uh, keys off off for extension 1.3 and of course the company of the software software company hasn't made a crack for it, a fix for the crack yet. You have any questions sir? Anything else? Uh, there for Norton Disclock, I'd have to think. I don't know any offhand, but if it is, it'll be on the site, freaky.staticusers.net, when I wake up. So what other software programs do people use out there in their home and office? Word dialers. Okay, uh, as far as word dialers, uh, a guy named Simon says, is he in the crowd? You wanna come up here? He was actually gonna demonstrate Seek and Destroy 4. <laughs> okay, um, I have three discs for special people out there for uh, Seek and Destroy 4, it's a new word hour for the uh, Mac platform. All the way in the back, in the front, and off over there. Yeah, um, do you have one? Oh, two, maybe. Um, let's see. It'll be up on his site when he wakes up uh, also. Uh, <laughs> um, if you want to get it, uh, if any of you know of Apple uh, Communications, they'll probably have it. Uh, Ebola, run by Vaccine, he's, I don't know if he's in the crowd. Oh, okay, good. Apple's dead, thank God. <laughs> um, you can get it at Ebola or on Karacho. I run a Karacho server uh, called... Yeah, have a stat, jackass. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, um, you can get it on Acid, uh, which is acid.msec.net, I believe. Um, okay, I'll see if this is actually the test that has it. Does it have a flop? Or, no, it doesn't. <laughs> okay, well, uh, since we don't have a computer here to use it, um, I'll just talk a little bit about it and what it's going to be leading up to. Um, it's new, it is actually works as an easier interface. Um, I don't know, uh, let's see where to go. I don't remember because I have to look at it. Um, it's, the future release is actually going to support multiple modems. Um, it doesn't have, it's not like a super duper like any change from any word dialer that's out there now, um, except that it's uh, kind of like the predecessor, or it's going to be the predecessor of uh, it's the Lightman project um, that this guy named Quest is working on. Uh, the Lightman project is actually going to be, he, he went out to make the best word dialer for the Macintosh and add features that other systems have that us poor Mac OS souls don't have in a word dialer. Um, it's going to support uh, area code databases. Um, let's see, it's going to have, so you can stick in like a WAV file or, you know, like a simple send or whatever and saying like, oh, I'm sorry, wrong number. So when you call it, it'll just play that if it doesn't get a carrier. Um, probably going to, you know, fax recognition. Um, it's going to have a uh, blacklist so you can type in like local numbers of where, you know, don't dial 911, don't dial like the police department or, you know, your local 
federal investigation places. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, also, it's going to have um, a terminal, which is going to show you the um, everything that's being sent to the modem. So if there are any kind of problems, you'll be able to kind of figure it out and take a look at. Um, easier readouts. It's not just going to be a whole bunch of like garbled text with like empty boxes in there, and you know, wondering what the hell's going on. Um, I'm trying to think what else it supports. Um, I don't know. Any questions so far about it or? So right now it's in beta, beta 3. Um, it's private, so you can't get it and you won't get it until it's so public beta. No, that's, yeah, you can distribute those. Because, yeah, that's for that. Um, any questions at all? I don't know what else to say. No. Rock on. Um, they all stick in the CD drive. No. Okay. Um, that's about it for that. Um, so if there are no questions, I will uh, start making beat beatbox noises into the microphone in three seconds. Two, two one. <laughs> your local freakers and um one question yeah you mentioned they play a wave file on you not getting carried is that support for all modems um right now it i i don't have uh, any kind of beta that has that feature supported yet um he's working on it it's yeah that's that's not on uh seek and destroy uh seek and destroy 4 by the way is based on seek and destroy 3 by boris uh boris at dylan dot uh, something dot uk dot whatever um, you can it's on the it's on like the uh, what all about screen um, basically what Quest did um, he checked out the source and he basically rewrote all of it and he just called it seek and destroy 4 because it was based on the other guy's code and um, yeah that's about it so more beatbox noises would you like me to sit down now Thank you. Questions? Yep. I have no clue what you just said. Oh yes, there's lots of those. They're on freaky.staticusers.net. And they work very well. They're old. Not like BTMF has changed at all. So now we're in the progress of porting stuff over. BO2K. Bad. Anyway, while this is going, I'd like to thank you all for coming. I'm kind of out of stuff to say. Word scanners. Uh, AG, AG Group has put out one, PC, Mac, whatever, it works very well. There's BP Scan, which scans for remote vulnerabilities, made by a group called Broken Pipe, who brought the project. Logic made one. Uh, again, all this stuff is on my site, and you can search for it, and you'll find it all. Freaky.staticusers.net. Anybody else? Can you sniff? 
ya. Yeah, Etherpeak, their demo has expired even when you download it from their site, so go to Hotline and look for it. Yeah. Some of you that missed it the first time. Hell yeah. Any Windows box to use here? Um, any other questions? I don't get one. <laughs> Getting kind of personal, aren't ya? Um, Love it. All right, thank you all for coming. Goodbye.